high-speed internet streaming from the moon and other things you probably have not even thought of that you might need if you were a lunar astronaut. Today, Nokia and Axiom Space announced a partnership to provide internet to the astronauts, and not just any internet, but high-speed 4G LTE internet specifically. This will be an option for astronauts to communicate with each other and with people on Earth. Think of the high-definition streaming video that we will have once astronauts return to the moon for Artemis 3. And in retrospect, this is a pretty obvious partnership, but I wanna back up and tell you how we got there and what to expect for the future, because it's not just astronauts that will use this network. This is part of an integrated system of infrastructure that we really take for granted. There are so many components of staying sustainably on the surface of the moon and in lunar orbit that we just take for granted because we live here on Earth where so much infrastructure is already in place. I'm Lara Forsick. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical, and I also do space career coaching. And one of the things I talk about is that anybody from any background, any expertise, any industry can work in space. So imagine you're a Nokia employee, specifically Bell Labs. And yes, I'm talking about the Alexander Graham Bell Labs. You are working on communications here on Earth. Did you ever think that you would be working on communications for the moon or on the moon? Like that probably never crossed your mind, yet here we are. I'm telling you, anybody from any field can work in space. Nokia is setting up a high-speed integrated cellular network on the surface of the moon and have it be remote for uncrewed robots and hoppers, for people on foot, you know, on their spacesuits, and also in the future for lunar rovers that will carry astronauts around the moon longer distances. Specifically here, this is a partnership with Axiom Space. You might remember that NASA had been developing their next generation spacesuits, but then they decided to contract that out to two companies to Axiom Space and to Collins Aerospace. Collins recently dropped out. I have a video on that if you want to back up and see what happened there, why they decided to back out. But the bottom line is that Axiom Space is the only provider right now for new spacesuits. New spacesuits for the International Space Station and spacesuits for the moon. Now, of course, we have SpaceX, and I can't imagine a future where SpaceX isn't going to be using their own spacesuits for similar purposes, but that's a whole nother story. So in 2022, NASA NASA awarded Axiom Space $228.5 million to develop spacesuits, and then they added on extra additional award, a $57.5 million task order for what they are calling Exploration Extravehicular Activity Services. X-E-V-A-S. I know, rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? And part of this task order is to integrate Nokia's system into the spacesuits. We're talking UHF and Wi-Fi here, but we don't need to wait till Artemis 3 in order to see whether this works. Nokia already has a NASA tipping point award back in 2020 to develop their system. That was a $14.1 million award, and they are launching on Intuitive Machines 2. So you might remember earlier this year, Intuitive Machines 1 launched and landed on the surface of the moon and then tipped over a bit. So partial success there. Hopefully, IM2 will be successful. The current date for IM2, it got pushed to December, January timeframe, which probably means January, probably means early 2025 for IM2, unless by some miracle they can get it off by the end of the year. And what they are testing is a system that is very similar to the spacesuit system, slightly different, but very similar. They are integrating their base station network in a box on the lander itself. And that includes the base station, antennas, and other systems. And then they've got the user modules and the rover modules. So there's two systems that are going to be tested during this IM2 mission. Intuitive machines themselves are developing MicroHopper, and Lunar Outpost is developing a rover, which will be delivered on IM2. The system is designed with a range of up to two kilometers, but according to their ground testing in some configurations, they've actually gotten the range to be longer than two kilometers. Now they do say if their system on IM2 does not work, it's okay because it's a slightly different system that they're going to be testing for Artemis 3. And when astronauts are involved, you absolutely want communications. The Nokia system is not going to be the only system that the astronauts are going to be entrusting their communications to on the moon. There is, of course, backup systems, which I couldn't find a whole lot about, I think because Axiom has not released this information or has not finalized their complete design yet. But you can imagine it might be something similar to radio, which is what was used during Apollo. In fact, Apollo used Motorola radio equipment. They had a very similar system where it was integrated into a 
backpack that the astronauts had on their backs and also integrated into the LEM. Those radio signals were sent to Earth receiving stations and that's how we got the live footage or close to live footage of astronauts walking on the surface of the moon. So if you remember the super grainy footage of Apollo, and I wasn't alive back then, but I sure have watched it a lot. Imagine now it is higher definition video. It is crystal clear and it is live. And how that might change the perception of a lot of people who even aren't in the space industry or maybe even skeptics when it comes to space. For those of you less familiar, and this is not my area of expertise either, but 4G has speeds of up to 150 megabits per second download and 50 megabits per second upload. I don't know if that's the system that, if I don't know if that's what's expected here with Nokia and their system, but you know that's what it is terrestrially. And they of course are looking at upgrading their system. They're looking at upgrading the range so it goes beyond two kilometers. And that's gonna be important for later Artemis missions when the astronauts are driving around on the surface of the moon. Earlier this year, Nokia also participated in a DARPA Luna 10 award where they were in collaboration with other companies that are working on other aspects of lunar infrastructure. I have a whole video on that too, which you can watch there. I get really excited about this kind of thing because it's such hidden technology that we all take for granted, but will absolutely be needed on the surface of the moon. According to the presentations that were made public by DARPA, Nokia proposed a LTE 4G 5G support solution of 10 kilometer range and 100 megabytes per second. And as I said, I couldn't find a whole lot of information about Axiom's AXEMU, that's the Axiom Extravehicular Mobility Unit, because not a lot of information is out there. It's currently going through a design review. But one thing that Axiom has said since they are now the sole provider, previously the idea was that you know, Collins Aerospace and Axiom would focus on different aspects of spacesuits. One would be for microgravity conditions on space stations, and one would be for lunar surface operations with the dust and regolith that gets everywhere. But now, because Axiom is that sole provider for NASA, they are talking about having spacesuits that can be used for both situations, both environments with minimal changes, say the changing of the boots, for example. You better believe that I'm going to talk about Axiom spacesuits once we find out a bit more information about them. I would also love to know from any of you who are China watchers, what China is doing in terms of their spacesuits, in terms of their cellular communications or any other communications. I don't speak the language, so it's really hard for me to find that information. So I'd love to know out there if you know much more than I do about what China's infrastructure on the surface of the moon might look like. Another thing that's interesting is the fact that these are brand partnerships. Nokia is a company you've heard of. Motorola is a company you've heard of, right? These are companies that are terrestrially known companies that are partnering with space companies. This is absolutely crucial because of the expertise that this brings and also because of the brand recognition that this could bring, the, the partnership. Not, not many people out there have heard of Axiom Space outside of the space community, but a lot of people have sure heard of Nokia and Bell Labs. Space companies partnering with non-space companies, such as Doritos partnering with the Polaris Dawn program, that is of such crucial importance that I made a whole video about brand partnerships with non-space companies. So you can watch that next. 